Hello and thanks for tuning in to my YouTube channel, Pickleball Pick Apart. My name is Rory. I take pickleball games off of YouTube and I pick apart the play on the court. Watching my videos will help make you a better pickleball player. Here's a game in which one team totally dominates the other. It was played on a very beautiful day in California. It was windy and I think the wind did affect the play. Now sometimes I get pushback when I talk about the age of players, so I'm not going there. I don't think age was the main factor in the outcome of this game. I think ability was. The winning team was able to get to the kitchen more often than the losing team, and they also kept the ball lower than the team that lost. It's very, very clear what happened, and you can learn a lot by watching. A big thanks to the YouTube channel Astro Pickler for posting this video. Let's go. A beautiful day in Southern California, just a little windy. Here's the first serve. You know, I mentioned this over and over again. The first point in a game is just important as the last point. Not sure what happened there, but she hit that serve into the bottom of the net. That is a perfect example of what happens when a team gets stuck at the back of the court and cannot hit a shot, allowing them to move forward. When stuck at the back of the court and playing defense, it's very difficult to win the point. So let's go back and take a look at exactly what happened. Here comes the serve, and it really all starts with the third shot. This is it to her backhand. She is having to hit this ball while reaching out. She pops it up. She cannot move forward. She did reset it, but neither of those players moved up. It's what I call a dead reset. Let's see if they can reset it again. No. Second chance. No. Third chance. No. Fourth chance. Look what she does here. She actually tries to lob this ball over the player's head heads in this win. It just is not going to work. So what has happened here is one player has moved up, the other player has not. The players in black realize it, and there's no way they're going to hit this ball to the player who is at the non-volley zone. They are going to continue to keep the player who is in the back of the court in the back of the court. Good job. One more time, and she finally puts it away. So the players in the back of the court, I think, had seven opportunities to move forward. One player did make it forward. The other one did not. You pop the ball up at this level, you're going to lose the point. And that's exactly what happened. The players in black are able to keep it low. This player just popped it up. It was hit at her feet. Good job by the players in black. I do not know what level this is at, but I know it's at least 4.0. The players in black are very good here. Great shot. I mean, it doesn't get much better than that. A third shot right to the player's backhand that she hardly even got the paddle on. Watch how good a shot this is. Boom. Just textbook. If you're going to hit a third shot drop from the left side of the court, that is a very good place to hit it if the player in that side of the court is right-handed. Pop it up. That's a shake and bake right there. Third shot. Watch what happens. One. Here comes the second shot. The third shot popped up right here. Boom. Put away. Shake and bake, baby. Really good. Yep, put away, popped up, put away. The ladies in white are going to have to make the players in black hit the ball off of the bounce. If they volley, they have no chance. That ball is out of the court. Free point, given away. That's the last thing they need to do is give away free points. Perfect reset. 
This is the shot the ladies in black have. The question is, do the ladies in white have that shot? She's hitting this ball backing up here. Good job. Got the roll of the tape. Popped up. Goodbye. Oh, she got that. Great job, but popped up again. There is a third shot drive that the player could not handle. So as you can see, these players in the near court have a very game. They can hit a third shot drop, and they also can hit an effective third shot drive. A quick timeout to tell you about my online pickleball store, pickleballprintables.com, where you will find the coolest pickleball swag on the planet. T-shirts, coffee mugs, tumblers, totes, caps, and kiss cut stickers. 65 clear, crisp, and clean designs to choose from. Use the coupon code YouTube and get 10% off your first order. Dink in style. Go to www.pickleballprintables.com or click the link in the description below. I don't know why she was not all the way up to the kitchen, but look where she's standing. Take a look right here. She is about four feet away from the kitchen line. Goes down to get it. Got that one, but she could not get that one. If she would have been further up, she definitely could have gotten that ball over the net. There's a big difference between, between being at the nine volley zone and three or four feet behind it. So the ladies in white finally get the opportunity to score a point and get a little momentum, and the player misses her serve. Great shot. There is that third shot drop. She hit a drive a while ago. Just watch how good this is. There's a lot of top spin. The ball just dives down at the player's feet and she just can't get it. If you can master that shot, you will be a very good pickleball player. Oh, went with the drive and hit it out of the court. That's out of the court. The team in the back court has yet to score a point. And the score is eight to nothing. They're switching sides now. Let me just point something out here. It's very interesting. The players in white have a logo on the back of the shirt and it says T Banger. So I am assuming they consider themselves bangers. Maybe that's the reason why they have not been able to reset the ball and move forward to the kitchen as often as the players in black. Let's see if I'm wrong about that. Great shot. Just popped up. They just cannot volley with the players in black. They're just too good. They're going to have to bounce the ball before the players in black hit it if they want to even have a chance. 9 nothing now. Nope. Just is not going to work. I hope you see what's happening here. For me, it's very clear to see why the team in the back of the court is dominating. There's a third shot drive. She really doesn't need to do that. She can really hit a third shot drop. Instead, she tries a drive and hits it right into the net. And there's another missed serve. So if you're behind eight, nine, 10 to nothing and you have the chance to serve and you can't get your serve in, then it's all over. Still, they cannot hit the ball over the net and get it to bounce before their opponents hit it. Watch this, in the air, in the air again, just not going to work. She has her hands on her hips, probably thinking to herself, what's going on here? If she goes back and watches this game, she will understand exactly what happened. Oh, she got it past her that time. She tried a two-handed backhand, couldn't get her paddle up in time. Good shot. I think they might have actually scored a point there. That's not going to work. 
stuck at the back of the court, chances are she's not going to be able to defend forever. There you go. Great job. Just cannot hit a ball to reset it, to move forward. That ball was out. Again, it's very windy on this beautiful California day. Not sure which way the wind is blowing, but I think it's probably at the back of the players in black. Oh, good shot. Can't do it. Just can't do it. So what happens a lot of times with players who play like the players in white, if they consider themselves bangers, is this. They play against the same players all the time who were probably bangers as well, and they probably do quite well. They probably win a lot of games, but when they come up against a team like the players in black who have a more well-rounded game and can hit all of the shots, they really have a difficult time. Goodbye. That's what I'm talking about right there. The players in white, again, if they're bangers, they're just not used to dinking. They're used to having the point over in three or four shots with power. Third shot drive. Fifth shot reset. The players in black got up to the net. Again, she missed a two-handed backhand, so nice job by the lady in white hitting it to her backhand. Oh, hit it out of the court. So I think definitely the wind is at the back of the players in black. Did it again. So if the score is whatever it is and the team in white has three points, the reason they have three points is because the team in the black missed a couple of return of serves, giving the team in white three points. Oop, can't get it over the net. So there's a point for the team in white. I think they have three now. Not going to work. Not going to work. Not going to work. Oh, she reset it. Good job. That's the first time she really reset that ball and was able to get forward. And, of course, they won the point. All right, here comes the third shot. Let's see if she can hit it in the kitchen. Nope. Goodbye. Just don't understand a third shot like that. I mean, what was she really hoping to accomplish? Now, in that case, the players in the back of the court got stuck and could not move forward. Nope. Nope. Get stuck in the transition zone. You'll have a difficult time. Goodbye. Out of the court, and that's the game. So there you have it, the final score 15 to 3. The winning team had command of more shots than the losing team did. The winning team was able to hit shots that allowed them to move forward in the court so they could get into an offensive position where the losing team got stuck in the back of the court and spent way too much time defending. And usually when that's the case, the team that cannot get into an offensive position loses. So that's it from Pickleball Pick Apart. I really hope you learned something from watching this video. And if you did, I hope you take the time to like it, subscribe to my channel, and click the notification bell so you'll be notified when I post a new video. And don't forget to check out my online pickleball store, pickleballprintables.com, where you will find the coolest pickleball swag on the planet. This is Rory saying, as always, thanks for watching, and see you on the court.